Hi guys, it's Ollie from Van Life Conversions. In this video, I'm gonna talk you through some of the electric components that we've installed into this conversion, which is Freddy. So to orientate uh, you to where we are, we're in the garage space, and we've got this small unit here, which will house a 12 volt compressor fridge. And then this box here is the battery box, which I've built to house the battery bank. This consists of two 150 amp hour AGM batteries, which are wired in parallel. We have sized this 300 amp hour battery bank so that the daily demand does not exceed 50% of the total capacity. This is important, especially when using AGM batteries or lead acid batteries to prevent any damage due to sulfation. The advantage of having the solar panels is that these batteries will be receiving a daily trickle charge. Uh, and therefore the damage is, is reduced dramatically. If you're gonna be converting for a period of time under uh, cover from sunlight, then it is advised to plug in the van using the mains hookup so that these batteries can keep topped up and not get damaged. It is a really good idea to work out how much electricity you're gonna be using on a typical day inside your van. Uh, to do this, we use a spreadsheet method this load spreadsheet is available on our website, which we'll put the link in the section below so that you can size up your own uh, electrical demand and size your battery banks appropriately. So let's take a look inside. So as you can see, we've wired these batteries using 50 mil flex tri-rated cable. Uh, the positive terminals are connected together and the negative terminals are connected together. And this creates a battery bank of 300 amp hours total. If you take a closer look, we can see on the positive terminals, I've put this main fuse, which is uh, rated at 200 amps. And this is resettable by pressing this red button here. If you press this red button, you can shut off all of the 12 volt loads and 12 volt chargers. This fuse is designed to protect the cable which runs to the 3000 watt inverter and also to the chargers and the 12 volt fuse board. On the negative terminal, we've connected the Victron Energy BMV712 shunt. What this does is it monitors all of the current going into and out of the battery bank and it connects to a monitor, which is located somewhere visible, and you can see how much capacity you've got left in your battery bank. So looking at the uh, cables which run off of the positive terminal, we've got one 50 mil uh, cable, which runs to the positive of the 3000 watt inverter, and the other cable runs to a positive bus bar. This bus bar is designed to minimize the amount of uh, ring terminals that are connected onto the positive terminal of the battery bank um, and it allows for a much cleaner install. On this bus bar we have got a cable which runs to each of the three chargers so the MPPT, the DC DC and the mains charger. We also have a cable running uh, separately to the fridge um, and also another cable which runs to a 12 volt fuse board which is what connects all of the circuits um, to the positive terminal. So the lighting circuits, the water pump, etc. Each of these cables has a, a strip link fuse, which is designed to protect the cable itself. And this is rated about 75% of the total current carrying capacity of that cable. So a 10 mil cable with a 70 amp capacity for carrying current, will look to um, size the fuse at 40 amps. You can also see that we've got a negative buzz bar which has four terminals on it. It has a uh, earth connection which allows there to be an earth fault path when you're on mains hookup and this is connected to both the chassis of the vehicle and the uh, copper pipe which serves the gas appliances. It is important that all negative connections uh, run through the shunt itself, so um, no uh, circuits are bypassing the shunt. This is important because the shunt is there to capture all of the current that is going both in and out of the battery, and so all of the negative connections need to be made on the load side of the shunt. So this is the 12 volt fuse board. 
and it is labelled up so you can see which um, circuits are represented by each fuse. If there is a fault in any of the circuits, then a red LED will light up, identifying which circuit has an issue. You can easily replace the blade fuse with another, and it is important to not um, replace a fuse with one that is rated higher than is currently in the uh, circuit. The 12 volt fuse board also has its own isolation switch, and this is uh, this 50 amp 12 volt loads resettable uh, breaker. So if you wanted to um, switch off all of your 12 volt loads, you could press this button here and that will isolate all of the 12 volt circuits. Looking to the top of the electrics board, we've got three Victron Energy chargers. Now these are the three chargers that we use in our off-grid conversions. An MPPT, which is uh, designed to carry the charge from the solar panels on the roof into the battery bank, and this is rated at 30 amps. A DC to DC smart charger, which again is rated at 30 amps. And what this does is this connects the leisure battery bank to the vehicle alternator once the vehicle is driving and the engine is switched on. And the final charger is the blue smart charger, again rated at 30 amps, which is the mains 240 volt charger. So when you're uh, plugged in uh, at an electric hookup point, this then becomes active and it will charge the battery bank uh, via the mains electricity, uh, which is plugged in. The electric hookup uh, point is connected to this uh, consumer unit and this consumer unit runs via a RCD to protect the circuits and also a double pole circuit breaker which is rated at 16 amps. A double pole circuit breaker protects both the neutral and the positive cables because you, you want to be able to guarantee um, that correct polarity is achieved. Um, but when you're traveling around various countries, it may be that the polarity is not guaranteed. So a double pole breaker just is an additional safety piece uh, that's in the wiring regulations. This um, consumer unit has a, a circuit which is connected to uh, two points that it serves. One is the mains charger and the second point it serves is for the combination boiler. The combination boiler is able to run off gas, electricity, or a mixture of both. So when you're on a hookup, you can run your heating system solely off of the uh, 240 volt electricity generated at the campsite. So this 3000 watt inverter is able to power most domestic appliances that you'd find, ranging from a hairdryer to a blender. And this inverter will serve a double socket. It is controlled either by pressing the rocker switch on the inverter itself, but as it's located in the garage space, we find this inverter's best feature is the use of a remote control. So if you set it to the second option, you can turn the inverter on by pressing this red button and it gives an audible beep. You now know that the double sockets in the living space are live, and when you're done using them, you can turn it off, you hear a small click, and that lets you know uh, the socket is not live anymore. The advantage of having this capability and not having the inverter on all the time is the, um, the standby does draw about uh, one amp um, of current just when it's um, not powering anything, but just for the internal features. So being able to turn it off when it's not in use is a really good feature.